Dear audience, welcome to today's development discourse. I am Tanzim Ferdos and welcoming you all at today's session. Today, uh, it is our pleasure to have uh, Ms. Bitopi Das Choudhury, uh, Country Head, Corporate Affairs, Brand and Mar Marketing, Standard Chartered Bank in Bangladesh. Welcome to our show. How Thank are you, you doing? Thank you for having me here. I'm doing absolutely fine. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I I'd like to know about the initiatives Basically, uh, today we'll be talking about CSR initiatives. So, from which ph philosophy uh, Standard Chartered Bangladesh started doing CSR activities, and what are the CSR initiatives right now you, uh, you are having on the ground? So, basically, the concept of giving back to communities exists for a long time, and this exists in many organizations. But at Standard Chartered, we do not call the giving uh, CSR anymore because CSR is sort of limited in, in how we do things. Rather, we call all our initiatives as sustainability initiatives because we believe as an organization at Standard Chartered that the community should not become permanently dependent on outsiders. At the end of the day, whenever we are working with any community that is in need today, the way we design our programs is that Standard Chartered will help them now and for another finite timeline, maybe three, five, 10 years. But after that, when Standard Chartered is not there anymore, then the community should be able to carry on with the engagement or initiative by themselves or maybe take in other partners. But it has to be sustainable. That is the biggest mainstay of the way we design our community initiatives. To your question as to how or why we started this, actually this is not new for Standard Chartered. Standard Chartered in Bangladesh specifically has been engaging with communities for at least three decades and um, globally also uh, standard chartered in many markets now we are in 60 plus markets in most of the markets we are working with communities so that we can give back to the underprivileged and this philosophy has actually strengthened over the years and so now we have specific areas or we call them stands for standard chartered which we execute not only through community initiatives, but also in part through our operations, banking operations. Mm -hmm. And these three stands are accelerating net zero. Uh, the second stand is called lifting participation. And the third stand is called resetting globalization. Now, uh, we'd like to know about the initiative that uh, Standard Chartered uh, Bank Bangladesh took during COVID-19 that has positively impacted life and livelihood of this country? COVID-19 pandemic is something that actually uh, derailed many people and organization at one go because this was something nobody expected, especially the scale and, and the um, spread of it, right? So what we saw during that time was unprecedented. We have never experienced anything before and hopefully we'll not experience the same ever again. We hope so. Having said that, um, what we used to do as community engagement in normal times would usually be focused on health, on uh, livelihood, on skills development, and giving people access to a better life. Mm -hmm. In general, that is what we normally do. And of course, the focus on environment is there. But when COVID-19 came, we realized that saving lives and making sure people have enough to eat and survive was the need of the hour. That was the most important uh, support that everybody around us needed at that time. Especially when there was full lockdown. We remember that we were trying to discuss amongst ourselves as to how do we take food to people? Because we heard that it doesn't matter whether people are rich or poor they did not have access to food grains or uh, vegetables or anything that they can cook at home. Especially we have clients who are very old, their children may, may be living outside of Bangladesh. We have old elderly couples who live by themselves. How do we help them? And that is when we all sat together and decided that first and foremost, we will work with a partner mm -hmm. who can reach people and take food stuff to their doorsteps. So our first intervention during COVID-19 was that we took food packages for 15 days for a family of five people. So through this intervention of giving livelihood packages to people, we reached out to 140,000 people with 
almost 6 million meals that we distributed to them. Now, uh, we'd like to know about uh, Standard Chartered Bangladesh Bank's initiative focusing on youth and future leaders. So what are you doing for youth of Bangladesh? Uh, the Standard Chartered Bank, globally, we have recognized that the youth are what makes our future nations uh, prosper. It, that is what will give us a fighting chance of being a developing nation, a more developed nation going forward. Globally, we are focusing on helping the youth to learn, earn and grow. And for that, we are spending in education, we are investing in employable skills, and we are also trying to give the youth entrepreneurship skills and capabilities that will help them to become contributing citizens in their countries. So in Bangladesh, for example, under this Ages of Future Makers, we have taken up a lot of initiatives. Firstly, we started about four years back with USEP to give our youth vocational training on certain areas of high demand. And we have seen that in the last four years, we have reached 2,100 beneficiaries. Of them, over 93% have already been employed in various skills. So it's very high very. numbers. And in fact, Yusuf has also uh, come back to us as a partner. They have reported to us saying that this is one of the most successful uh, initiatives they have seen because we chose those vocations uh, with specific um, you know, employment in mind. And we have also linked our clients as the employers of these beneficiaries. So USIP is giving them employable skills and certified skills. At the same time, we've worked with organizations like BRAC and Sajida Foundation to develop entrepreneurs, especially in COVID. I was talking about COVID interventions. This is also something that has been done post-COVID. We saw that a lot of um, migrant workers who were working in Middle East and many other countries, they have come back to Bangladesh, many of them empty handed, and they did not have a, a livelihood. We also found through a study from BRAC that uh, people who are employed abroad, they don't want to come and seek jobs here. They have a sort of a prestige or ego that works, so they don't go around searching for jobs they were very interested to become entrepreneurs and we with the help of BRAC and Sajida Foundation worked with them to give them skills and training to become successful entrepreneurs and later on after they graduated from our program they also had access to finance to start their own businesses and that has really helped them. Post-COVID what we also added to these trainings is also the provision for meals because we realized as I said during COVID just surviving was a big issue. So people were looking to feed themselves. And if we wanted the people to come and do training, we had to ensure that they were well fed. So we were also providing them with meal support during our trainings. Great. Um, we'd like to know very briefly about the financial access, uh, access they are getting now. So the trainees, yeah. So that is not through our program. That's why I did not uh, mention in details, but that would be say our partner was BRAC or Sajida. Mm -hmm. They themselves have their own microfinance uh, programs yes, yeah. through which since we basically brought them together, they also had the access and knowledge to take from our partners and, and take this seed money for becoming entrepreneurs. Mr. Chaudhary, you, uh, you talked about the very high percentage uh, of the trainee that got job in the market. It's 93%. It's very uh, a great number. So how do you basically evaluate these uh, I interventions? So what are the mechanism of your monitoring and evaluations? So we'd like to know about that. And number two is uh, you have uh, from each and every project, you have new learnings. So how do you utilize those learnings for uh, next projects or initiatives? Absolutely. So basically, um, when we design a project, we usually co-create the projects with our partners. So it's not that USEP, for example, when we started working with them, we did not take the program that they had off the shelf. Mm -hmm. We discussed with them, we wanted to go into specific geographic areas. We wanted to target specific types of beneficiaries. And we also set the KPIs before the program starts. Mm -hmm. So, and that KPI is based on something called baseline numbers. 
all the partners that we work with, they themselves have very good st uh, statistics and they also have very good monitoring and evaluation capabilities. So the partners themselves, when we are designing the project, they come with us with a status as of today. Mm -hmm. This is how the beneficiaries are. And we also set that a target that, you know, the beneficiary statistic has to move from X to Y at the end of my project. So KPIs are set at the beginning of the project. During the project itself, we monitor on periodic basis through reports given by the partner and also we do the field visits. I myself and my team, we go and visit the beneficiaries time to time. And at the end of the project itself, we get a project completion report. And based on that, we can compare and see the difference that this has made. So all our partners that we work with have to have these capabilities of strong monitoring, evaluation and reporting. This also gives us new learnings, as you rightly pointed out. We don't wait for always the end of the project. Even sometimes during the you know, halfway through or one third of the way, if we see that the project or KPI are not being met as we desire, if we're seeing that the uptake is slow, it is not you know, being very popular with the target beneficiaries, mm -hmm. we often change. And so this has happened and, and uh, you know, several projects and, and it happens in two ways. One is, for example, with USEP again, we started the project first year, phase one, whatever we have seen in phase two, we could improve upon the learnings of phase one. And so the phase two uh, project was a bit more successful because we could uh, access the beneficiaries or approach the beneficiaries easily. We could identify the target beneficiaries more easily. At the same time, we, we also change some of the subjects that we have, were offering the learnings on. The second type of change that we have also done based on a learning is also that we might have seen from our partner that a particular project we thought will become very popular for certain target groups. Mm -hmm. But then we saw we were giving them the training, but they were reluctant to do jobs, for example. And we have seen this in very ultra poor uh, communities. Um, this was one of our projects with Sajida Foundation. Uh, they all uh, took the training, but when they were employed, after a month or two, uh, especially the women, they started n dropping off from their employment. And I actually went and interviewed some of them. I spoke to them and one or two of them were saying the the employment place is very far from their home. So they do not want to take the bus and, and go there. That's why they are not comfortable doing a job. And these sort of feedback actually led us to help the same beneficiaries through entrepreneurship. So initially we were giving them employment skills, but then we designed the project as entrepreneurship skills so that they can become entrepreneurs sitting at home. So these are all some of the examples of learnings we take and redesign our project. Okay, uh, my next question to you, uh, you talked about uh, entrepreneurship skills and skill-based training. Uh, you also talk about the education. So uh, what kind of uh, educational intervention uh, you're taking right now and how you're getting the response uh, from the community? So these are uh, interventions or support that we do in the mainstream education. Mm -hmm. So for example, regular curriculum of universities, we have quite a bit of scholarships that we give. In fact, in, uh, we've been giving this scholarship for more than 10 years uh, to two different institutions of Dhaka University. Mm -hmm. And these goes to underprivileged uh, students, but meritorious students. And in the last 10 years, we have reached more than 800 beneficiaries and the Scholarship that we give is one of the highest amounts uh, for any Dhaka University scholarship that is being administered. As, as so these well. are in, uh, for tertiary level education? Yes, these are for bachelor's and master's in economics department and development studies department. Great. We have been doing this for the last 10 years. So uh, we are talking about different initiatives. So what's your thought or what's your opinion how this initiative uh, uh, will basically help Bangladesh economy to grow in future? The youth who are getting empowered today through our support of education, employable skills and entrepreneurship, they are the leaders of tomorrow. So the youth are the ones who will become the earning members and active citizens who will drive the economy tomorrow. So this in itself is where future makers or our projects come in as, as the partner in progress to the country. At the same time, we are investing in health sector. We are supporting a lot of hospitals. Through COVID, we have given three oxygen generating plants to three big hospitals and we still continue doing so in other hospitals. Mm -hmm. So in the health sector also, we are ensuring 
that our people, our youth, our children remain healthy, grow up healthy. At the same time, we are doing what needs to be done in environment because we are not only trying to reduce our own carbon footprint, but we're also helping our clients to uh, have less impact in the in environment. At the same time, through CSR, we are accelerating net zero. So all of that will help Bangladesh uh, become a better country. As the bank, as the financial institution that we are, we bring in global best practices and we also are the largest foreign bank in the country, as you know. And by that, we bring in a lot of learnings and sophisticated financial instruments into the country as well. So you've seen that uh, in many of the infrastructure development projects, Standard Chartered has been a partner. In um, the trade uh, and commerce space, we are one of the biggest financiers on the ready-made garment sector, as well as other forms of trade in other industries as well. So we have been supporting some of the biggest growth industries in the country for the last 118 years that Standard Chartered has been present. Mm -hmm. You might also know that in the retail space, we are one of the leaders and have always been a pioneer in retail banking. We are proud to say that in Bangladesh, we introduced the first ATM machine, first debit card, first credit card, and many such firsts are there under our belt. So we've been a partner in progress to Bangladesh in 118 years and we hope will remain to be so. Thank you, uh, Ms. Chaudhary, for your time here. So we talked about the different initiative of Standard Chartered Bank in Bangladesh. Thanks a lot. Uh, we believe viewers, you have learned a lot from this uh, conversation. We hope to continue this sort of conversation uh, in upcoming days. Thank you for being with us.